why do you downplay so much that you're a four top? It ain't but four four tops. No, I don't downplay that I'm a four top. It's just that uh, it's a job, man. I'm just lucky. I'm blessed. To some people, lucky. To me, I'm blessed, blessed that that I was able to 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 be that. And like you said, do what I. It's man for me to, like I say, do my job for one hour. Sometimes we sing for an hour and fifteen minutes. Sometimes we sing for forty-five minutes, thirty minutes, depending on what the show is. Uh huh. And to get paid, you know, that sometimes, man, it's, it's just, it's a blessing to me. So it's it's not nothing that's uh, fairy tale, you know, where mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. say, you know, legend and all that. It's just, man, I'm just grateful that I'm I'm that. That's all I can say. Humility. Yes. Humility so, still it, has its place. Is that what it is? Yes, it's humility. <laughs>All right, what's up, everybody? Brian and Bean, another episode of the Instincts Podcast. When I tell you, he doesn't like it, but I'm going to say it anyway. And we're going to ask him why he doesn't like the word legend. I got a legend in the building, Ronnie McNair. Now, I'm going to act like I don't know you, just for the sake of the people. But Ronnie McNair is in the building. If you've ever heard of the group, The Four Tops, we got one sitting right here on the Instincts Podcast, man. First of all, how you feeling? Thank I'm you. Good, dog. I can't that, thank you enough. What's man. happening, nephew? I know you. <laughs> Unk is in the building. I know you got a lot going on, man, so we appreciate your time. I really do. Okay. The show is about turning trials and tribulations into celebrations. Before we get into the four tops and how you became a four top, and I didn't even realize you were that passionate about singing until I was older. I, ain't, I had no clue, man. But now that you are where you are, let's talk to some people and inspire them. What is arguably the toughest thing in life you had to overcome? And then how did you overcome it? The toughest thing that, that I know was when my, when my father passed. Wow. Because he was my hero all my life. I had to kind of, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a daddy that was hands on. That matter. You know what I'm saying? And like, he was my man from the, the way they tell me, the way they tell me uh, when I was a baby, we bonded then. Right. Um, they say when I was born, I was bald headed, looked like a, what's that movie with them little man that went from old to young? Benjamin Button. Benjamin Button. Yeah, they, my, 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 my wife said, she saw a picture of me when I was a little, like a newborn baby saying, you, when I got about a month or two old, she, she said, you look like Benjamin Button. I said, hey, oh, yeah. So my mama, they told me my mother was shamed to take me places when they, because I was born in Camden, Alabama. Okay. And then she said she was shamed to take me places. But my daddy used to say, I don't care. You, say, you look like a monkey, but you mine. That's <laughs> so, right. That's a so, proud father. So probably we, we bonded, you know, like that. So all my life, me and my dad. But, uh, man, when my dad uh, was dying, I had just got with the four tops. Hmm. And, um. I went to the hospital, and I knew he wasn't going to make this one. And so I told the tops, I said, look, man, I can't leave my dad, man. I know we got a gig tomorrow, but I can't leave him. And they said, we understand. They were going to do it with the, just the three of them. Gotcha. So while I'm sitting there in the hospital looking at him, he, was, he woke up and said, son, I can't sleep with you sitting there. I said, dad, I ain't saying nothing, man. He said, I, then he took his oxygen mask off. This is a true story. When he took his oxygen mask off, he just pointed at me. He said, son, um, I told you all your life, this is a way to cook and crumble, man. He said, some things you can do something about, some you can't. He said, this is one of them. He said, you can't leave. The, he said, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to stay here with me. So you can't leave them before top. You can't leave them to come down here and do something about something you can't do them about. Control. He said, I am taught you to honor your obligations. This one of them. He said, you ain't the doctor. You ain't the Lord. And then he looked at me, Brian, you want to take my place? Just like that. Wow. <laughs> I stood there, man. I was speechless. That was the last five minutes that my dad talked to me. And I didn't say nothing. I just let him talk, man. So he said, uh, go on out of here, man. I know how you feel about me. He said, but remember this. You got to do this. He said, you going to hoop and how you, 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 you care about me more than yourself? He said, you got to do this, man. He said, so go on out of here. He said, because I know how you feel. And then he, then he kept on saying, now go on now, because I cry. I said, me too, daddy. And I went and kissed him on the forehead, went out the door. Now when I went out the door, I bent over and just let it go. Know. Then I went to the, back to the hotel and wrote a six page letter. Daddy, if anything happened, because I had to go back to Vegas. <clears throat> I said, if anything happened before I get back between to you or me, I want you to know thank you for, for, for making me play the piano, man. I said, look at me. I'm in one of the biggest groups in the world, man. Wow. 
I said, thank you for kicking me in my ass, man, making sure that I didn't take one step too many. I said, thank you for taking care of my mom, my, my sister, my brother. And with the whole six page letter was thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. So that right there was the, the question for me to get over that. And you know what? It wasn't until after that, when I had time to think about it, that I learned what he was telling me. Hey, man, this is part of the world here. You, we come here and we go. No matter how you hate for somebody to leave here. And, he, and, and even when, I, when he said, you want to take my place, he, the next thing he did said, you can if you wanted to, son. Mm. <laughs> That's what he said. Mm. I know how he feel about me. So and, that so right your, there, Your man, father bro. prepared you. He prepared you to be a man. Oh, man, let he me tell you He prepared you for life. Yeah. And, and I've lost. And his death. I've lost so many friends since then. And that was in 2001 when that happened. And just last January, man, I lost 19 friends, man, from COVID. Half of them was COVID and half of them were just people dying. And you re- in and, one month? And, no, and since last January of 2021. Oh, the whole year. 19. I just came from a funeral the other day in Oakland. I just came here. Yeah, remember, I come back on the plane yesterday, mm-hmm. man. And um, it's something, because it makes you think. When you say 19, and then you think about this. Oh, man, they show sure jumping around me. You know what I'm saying? Right. You start they, feeling your mortality. Yeah, and then my, 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 my kin and my family say, stop talking that kind of stuff now. And they're right, you know, because my dad already told me, look here, man, and do, do what you got to do. Because mm. you got to come the same way. Mm. He said, don't need you hooping and hollering about me, because when you get ready to try to do yours is when you're going to feel what you, what you need to feel. That's right. So let me ask you this. So you go ahead and do the show. You, you, tell the, you tell the other three guys, hey, man, my dad gave me his blessings. I'm back. Were they excited? Did, how did they respond? And how did you do that night? Uh, well, Obi Benson was one of the, the one that got me in the group, helped get me in the group. He's like, he adopted me as his little brother years ago. And, and when he, they knew I was coming on back when he saw me, he looked, he, all, he, he walked up to me and just hugged me and said, my man. We're going to do it. When I told him what daddy said, he right. said, my man. And then, he, then all, he did say, he right right man and so I went on, I did the show wow that night was it emotional did you did the people in the crowd know did you make any public statements no no I didn't say you didn't nothing. say nothing no, because I came back it wasn't like I missed the show I, I did it man I you know I knew he was wasn't gonna make it but I, I did the show hmm. and um by the time I, I went home after that that's why when I wrote the letter I told him when I get back and when I was on the road we had three uh two nights one two nights in Green Bay and when I got ready to go back to Las Vegas, and uh, I saw my phone blew up, I said, okay. And it's just what I did. Mm-hmm. Didn't shed no tear. I said, okay, he out of here. Mm-hmm. I said, thank you to God, because I know his, 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 his pain was over with. Yeah. I went on home, man, come on back to the funeral, didn't cry at the funeral, none of that. And they say that when you cool with your people, you don't get all of that guilt. Any, yeah, I overly emotional. I didn't have no guilt. No man. guilt, absolutely. That was, that was my man. Absolutely. You know what I'm you, I don't know if you know. You know my father passed. I know the same know, situation I know, happened. I know that hair passed. No, I'm saying, I'm saying the same situation with me. I was at his bedside, and um, he was not responsive. But I was the keynote speaker that next day, mm-hmm. and I was torn between my obligation and staying here. And my mother said, "Well, what do you think he would want you to do?" I said, "He he want me to go." She said, "You need to go get on that stage." And I, I, I told my mom, I said, send me three digits. This is exactly how we did it. That way you ain't got to call. You don't have to come up with the right words. I said, send me three digits and just tell me that's the time he passed. So when I get a text message with three digits, he passed at that time. And I got a 508 text message, AM, 508. And I had to be on stage at about noon and do a keynote address. And it was the one of the best to this day, one of the best keynote addresses I've ever done called yeah. Formulas for Success. And it was because of the blessing that I was given by my mom and my dad that you, you got to keep living, man. Yeah, it was, you, you was all there. I was there. I was on stage 100%. The thing you I, did wrong was didn't send me the number so I could have played it, put me another number with it for the photo. <laughs> Now we're going to get, now let's go ahead and jump into that 50, real quick. 50, 50, 88, y'all. You, 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 you add the four digits to it. 508, man. That's what we do, man. That's how yeah. We do it. So let's talk about Michigan, man. Do you know my, my first time ever playing the lottery? Do you know my grandmother thought I was lucky? Man, look here. She what? thought I was lucky. You I gave her some. May? Yeah, Miss May. Oh, yeah. My grandmother thought I was lucky. I gave her some num. I gave a few people some numbers and they hit when I was very little. 
And to this day, man, my family thinks I'm lucky. I actually do have some serious. I can tap into some other realms. I really can. I ain't gonna get into that right we'll now. We'll see but about that after the show. After the show, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I give you some numbers to play. Okay. But uh, how was it growing up in Pontiac, man? A lot of people don't understand Pontiac versus Detroit, Auburn Hills. You don't hear a lot about Pontiac. You got, you know, you, you saying something because just now I had to uh, call. You know, I got a new record that's out called Understanding. Okay. And uh, they were saying when they did the spot. They said, you know, Detroit's own. You like And huh? so, well, you know, that, that was okay. I got my start in Detroit. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But I had to call them. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, I had to call them. Say, yeah, I had to call the rec company and say, please tell them to change that because I'm from Pontiac. I don't know why. They, all through my life, they want me to be from Flint, from Saginaw, from Toledo, Grand from Detroit. Rap, Detroit. But Detroit. not Pontiac. I said, wait a minute. I, <laughs> I, I, I was raised in Pontiac from six months old. Right. And uh, But uh, Pontiac. Was a, I guess like anywhere else, man? When you grow up somewhere, that's that's it's it. Pride, yeah. There's nothing you don't you don't My have. My mom will correct you in a heartbeat. You don't have nothing to compare to because that's what you grew you grew up. And like I've been all over the world. Fortunately, I've been able to travel everywhere, man. And um, I still live seven minutes from Pontiac right now. Right. Okay. Because. Even though I've lost a lot of friends in my life, a lot of people, family members, I still got people that I know there. And just Pontiac is part of me, man. Absolutely. Like, what can I say? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about the upbringing. Now, you know me. I love to get into the hood stories. All right. And my mom I always share hood stories about my uncle, who, who was the funniest man in the world, but, but dead serious in the streets. I got cousins, nicest people in the world, but dead serious in the streets. Oh, yeah. Growing up in Pontiac... It's a little underestimated. Was it tough? Was it was it a lot of thugging going on? Well, at one time, Pontiac, Compton, California, and I think somewhere in Houston were the Flint. Pontiac, Flint, Compton, California, and somewhere in Houston was the most crime for its size. For the per capita? For the per capita. Really? Oh, yeah. What was going on in Pontiac? Was it the drug era? Was it was it gangs? Was it... I hear a lot about bank robbers. Uh, I don't know too much about that, but... I, your gang thing that didn't come to later mm -hmm. but but uh just outright doing each other wrong as people do all over the world man i you know i, I can't even say that it was because of pontiac it just that's the way of the world man mm -hmm. the way of the world is bad and the way of the world is good and it's up to you which one of them you want to be on right you know it's so, a choice so I, I i don't think that it was anything had to do with pontiac per se because of what it was it just well being a minority city and you had Everywhere you got more white than black in the city. Right. And right. And, and again, unfortunately, we always end up on the end, the bad side of that a lot of times. Absolutely. Know? That's my with, with the racism, which is the biggest trick ever man, ever, biggest trick man ever played on himself to me. Mm. Racism. Mm. But I don't know how they even got to that. How how you going? How do I hate you and don't know you? All right. Ignorance. Or how do I hate you because you look? You got to look. There's people that don't hate you because you come dressed a certain way. Absolutely. You know, it's just right. ridiculous how we let this play on us. Right. See, and, and uh, what uh, something taught me a long time. I learned the best lesson in my life, listening to the Ghetto Boys. I wasn't in the rap, but okay. I but I heard this song called "My Man Playing Tricks on Me." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, track that. was bad, man. Dun, 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 dun. Right. And I started listening to the music, man. But then I started listening to the world, to the lyrics. And I said to myself, I said, Nah, whoever wrote this should be rich from now on <laughs> if they follow what they say <laughs> right and 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 through the years i have i said it, i've gone through things where i think i'm i'm right and i'm wrong it's two left shoes man wow and it let me understand i'm doing this i'm playing myself mm. so in the last 20 years or so i've been i've been really concentrating on me absolutely and what makes me tick then i compare myself to the rest of the world instead of uh Point my finger at other people or saying, I wouldn't have did it if you don't stick. And what, being prejudiced. What does that sound like? Absolutely. I, I don't be stupid because I, I'm, I'm going to be stupid because you said so. Right. You know how we say that? Well, I wouldn't have did it if you don't, you don't be. What are you talking about? You didn't have to, but I let my mind play on me like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Controlling emotions. Yeah. So, so before we get into the four topics, I got to know how that happened. How does that work in the industry? There are two urban legendary stories I remember growing up. And you tell me if you know these two guys. One gentleman was in prison. They threw the dog in on him. He snapped the dog's neck, pulled his mouth apart, and threw the dog back out. from Pontiac? Yeah. I know him. 
can you can you? I mean, I I, I don't know why I like that story we won't so much. Say, we won't mention his name. No names, yeah. But what he do? <laughs> he was a true gangster. <laughs> but and you may not want to believe this. At the same time, he was a gentleman. Of course. Now, now some I people, believe that. Some people try to say, "How you going?" say that about uh, somebody that's you know that's that you know because he's been in a lot of things that's you know real bad but, notorious yeah but it depends on how a person treats you because i'm gonna tell you a guy another friend of mine i knew him as a kid mm-hmm. and he put his arm around all of us and made sure we was okay growing mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. i didn't know anything about his personal Street things life. he was doing right all i knew was is he's my boy's first cousin and we all grew up, and, they, and then I became family with him, too. So he looked out for me. So another friend came and said, man, how you call yourself uh, best friends with a killer? I said, I don't know nothing about no, nobody no. he killed. But if he did, I said, what if it was you? Mm. And that, that was one of my best friends that asked me that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm not talking about me. He showed me something. He said, I'm not talking about me. He said, when they come to get him, he said, because that's what happens when you live by the sword, you know, you die by it. Absolutely. He said, now, when they come to get him, you think they're going to care about who you are because you're his friend, going to take you too. Mm. So I had to think about that. Mm. Association. You know? So I started at least, at least backing up and don't be hands-on with him. Right, know? I used right, to right. want to be, I want to, I was a want to be gangster. Right, I got you. But, you, you know. You realize early. I, well, it wasn't early. I went through a lot of ridiculous things, man, you know, that, that held me back probably. I might, you know, but. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, right now, I'm one of the most blessed. Me, I'm, I'm one of the most blessed people on earth because I sing for an hour and play golf all over the world. <laughs> it don't get much sweeter than that, dude. It, don't get much it really don't get much sweeter than that. When you're living out your purpose and get to do what you want to do. That's right. So, like, like I want y'all to think about this. This is a man is locked up. They put the German Shepherd in the cell with him. They hear one noise from the German Shepherd. He grabbed the dog, rip his jaw open, break his neck, and throw the dog back out mm-hmm. to the police officer and say, "Don't send another, don't send another one in here." That that story right there as a child just told me one thing: don't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Go and there's people out here way tougher than you could ever imagine. Yeah. There was another story about a gentleman who robbed a bank, stayed in the woods like two days, and the only reason he got caught because the news came. And when he surfaced out the woods, the reporter saw him. Nah, and, and, that, you one, know I, that one. I don't know that particular one. Right. But I know another bank robber <laughs> that uh, one time he got away and he, he went to jail and then he got away and uh, he came back to town dressed as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, think and, I heard that and, one too. And he le- and he looted the police again. I don't know if that's the same uh, cat. That's, that's a different person. Yeah, okay. came back as a woman. Yeah. Went ahead and changed everything. Changed everything. <laughs> put on put on some women's clothes. Came back to town, visited who he wanted. <laughs> got back out of here as a lady. They, yeah, they got him later on. But, but I knew him, and he was he was a gentleman also. Right. Far as to me, absolutely, I get it. I Just because you do me. bad things, don't make you bad to everybody. That's right. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I, I love the, I love the hood stories coming up. Mom tell them tell them to me all the time, and my uncle used to tell me tell those them to me stories all the time. are in every uh, community Keep, across the country. Absolutely, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something that I see as being with the Four Top now. I've been with them 22 years now, and when we travel, we go. You know, especially when we take our tour bus, mm-hmm. and, and we drive. When you get to the city get downtown area and when you start coming from downtown on back out into the land man right first you see the minorities close around downtown mm. i didn't figure that out at first until i said they want you close to where you can get your money mm. hate your guts but they want your money mm-hmm. they'll hate you but but they'll take your money take your money shake your hand take your money dog you when you turn mm. your back mm-hmm. but as i see as we leave from downtown then you see mostly the black people or the other minorities, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, all of us, we, we're all together there. But then as you get more out, 15 minutes out of town, then you see we're sprinkled mm. together. Get 20 minutes out of town, you don't see too many of us. You got to look. And you just notice that's this everywhere. everywhere. Mm. Now, if that's not that, uh, I saw in the view one time when they call that, what did they say? Gentrification? Stem, no, stem, some kind of Red racism. Line? Systematic, uh, systematic, systematic mm-hmm. racism, mm-hmm. Yeah. systematic oppression, yeah, systemic, systemic. There mm-hmm. you go, racism. Yeah. I, I see it with my own eyes. So, why? You know, shouldn't so, be like that. Why is it like they say it's not that? But why is it like that all over the country? Yeah. It's and not only that, I've been overseas mm-hmm. and seen the same thing. 
you know. Well, we got to tap. We got to tap into the sports tops thing. Off camera, I called you a legend. He said, "Man, I won't quote, but basically, I don't care nothing about that." What? And, and I know what you mean by these not being title stricken. But why? Why? Why do you downplay so much that you're a four top? It ain't before four tops. No, I don't downplay that I'm a four top. It's just that uh, it's a job, man. I'm just lucky. I'm blessed. To some people, lucky. To me, I'm blessed, blessed that that I was able to to, to be that. And like you said, do what I, it's, man, for me to, like I say, do my job for one hour. Sometimes we sing for an hour and 15 minutes. Sometimes we sing for 45 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on what the show is. Uh-huh. And to get paid, you know, that sometimes, man, it's, it's just, it's a blessing to me. So it's it's not nothing that's uh, fairy tale, you know, where mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. say, you know, legend and all that. It's just, man, I'm just grateful that I'm, I'm that. That's all I can say. Humility. Yes. Humility yes. still has its place. Is that what it is? Yes, it's humility. So let me ask you this. Before we get into how you became a four top, when did you know that you could sing? And when did you know that singing would lead to a paid profession? Like, there's always a little pivotal point where you're like, you know, some people can sing in the shower. Some people can't sing at all. But when did you know, like, man, I can sing? I hate to interrupt, I hate to interrupt, I hate to interrupt, but don't you want me to pay the bills? You want the show to stick around, right? This segment was sponsored by the Instincts Training Series. Now, what is that? You ever wonder why a duck does not have blood vessels in his feet? You ever wonder why a polar bear or a brown bear or a black bear take care of their young to the death like any mother would? You ever wonder why a cheetah has a really long tail? You ever wonder why a rhino has birds on his back? You ever wonder why a praying mantis has a thousand eyes? I could go on and on and on, but the Instincts Training Behavioral Series will show you how to reach your full potential as God's highest creation. That's right. You're the most intelligent form on the planet, but you're the weakest emotionally. I'll show you guys how to tap into your instincts and reach your full potential and be more productive personally and professionally. Visit briannbean.com. That's briannbean.com for a free keynote and tap into your instincts today. Now back to the episode. Well, you got to develop it. You know, when I first started, it were people told me, "Man, why don't you stop singing?" <laughs> so I said, "Go tell you." I said, "Go tell your mama to stop singing." <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 who I had for <laughs> growing up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but then again, then I had to learn. Hey, your mama they was right. Singing. But they was right because I said, "Okay, I ain't ready." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I'm ready. Okay. You know, I wasn't. I think I was like in my. 30s when I really started being serious about singing. See, okay. I played piano first. Okay, gotcha. I take, took my dad and my mom made me play take piano lessons when I was like 10 years old. Gotcha. And I quit that after six months because I told them, I said, I, I don't want to play this lullaby. I did the same thing. I said, man, I don't want to play this lullaby. I want to play what I hear on the radio. So my <laughs> so my piano teacher said, well, if you, if you want to do that, you got to learn this first. So I told my mom and I said, I don't want to play no more then. So they stopped it. And I went on for about, I kept on going by ear. Okay. So, oh, this, wow. this is another, just didn't make sense. So, one, my, I had my grandfather, my mother's dad was an alcoholic. Sometimes he had to come stay with us sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was about 11, 12, and I was sitting on the piano trying to figure something out because that's what I wanted to do. And I'm trying to play a record I'm hearing. And so, uh, I got stuck. And I said, oh, forget it. I got ready to get up and I heard a voice say, oh, no. I didn't know he was in the house in the bedroom. And my granddad, he played trumpet back in the Louis Armstrong days. Oh, wow. And so he came out and said, no, nah, you said you didn't want to learn what they were teaching you. You want to learn on your own. Now you want to quit that. He said, if you don't sit down there and figure out, don't let me catch your ass on there no more. That's your grandfather? Oh, yeah, your grandfather. Okay. So in my mind, you know, my little smart aleck, I said, hey, you, you ain't my daddy. Yeah, my, you know, but that's my granddad. Mm-hmm. So I had to respect him. Absolutely. So I sat there. And do you know that? What he did to me made me understand you got to put practice yes, into what you do to make Absolutely. it work for you. Absolutely. And after that, I would sit there, man. Sometimes I would figure out a little four-bar thing that I was playing, and I figured it out so good I could get up at four in the morning and play it, bam, without even thinking about it. That was for me sitting there all day mm. playing the same thing, making sure how many different ways can I play this one little thing. And I get it so good till, like I said, I can get up out of my sleep and do and uh, singing another thing. You so got, you pretty much self-taught on piano? Yeah. I, I, other than those six months I took. Really? Yeah. Everything else by ear you could get a... Yeah. But then I ran into all kind of musicians as I got older 
in my life that taught me a lot of things, man. A lot of, a lot of the, uh, I remember one time uh, a lot of the guys that were arrangers <clears throat> for some of the big songs uh, Motown did. And I would work with some of them, and they would show me different things. And um, Take your gift and build on it. Yeah. You know. That's crazy. Okay, so how do you become a four top? Is it an audition? Do they tell you we're looking for people? Talk to people about, like, uh, growing up, there were some four tops, and then now there's some other four tops. How do these groups turn over? So I guess that's a bunch of questions. Let's start there. Okay. How do these groups turn over? Well, the way I got there was like a real, this was, I got there in a real Cinderella story. <laughs> okay, this is good. <laughs> I was playing, I was in Las Vegas. I lived in Las Vegas like 19 years. And I was out there playing in the lounges, but they what they call the lounge uh, uh, in uh guys that play and the girls that do play and sing in the lounge they call us lounge lizards okay or lounge rats sometimes okay but i've heard know, that before but you gotta you gotta you hang gotta, around you gotta get your you know you gotta take care of yourself you mm-hmm. gotta get the job so at this particular time the four tops band leader got sick with a kidney ailment mm-hmm. and had to go out so obi my buddy obi and, and uh let you know who Ronaldo benson was obi benson he wrote what's going on from Marvin Gaye. Really? Yeah, he was one of the one of the current four tops. Yeah, yeah. no, okay. he's he's passed now. That's one of the original. Okay, he's the one that helped me get in. And, and okay. took me in as a little brother. Gotcha. And as a matter of fact, he wrote "What's Going On," "Save the Children," and "Holy, Holy, Holy." Him and a guy named Al Cleveland. They gave Marvin a piece of his song to sing it, but they wrote it because the four nobody uh, they tried to give it to Levi. Mm-hmm. He didn't like it enough. He didn't do it, so they kept going around, and then they gave it to Marvin. But they did the right thing because when they gave it to Marvin, <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history. He put that groove on it, and that was that. All right. So, but for me anyway, I was I was off. I wasn't playing at the time, and so Obi said, uh, "Hey y'all, give Ronnie the job playing the piano. He's not working right now." Big brother looking out for little brother. Mm-hmm. So I came into the Four Tops organization. Now about five months later, that was like March of uh, when did I first ninety. March of, no, March of 2000. Hmm. And I went in and I started playing. I didn't do the band directing, but I stopped playing piano. So he, the band leader came back and came and they said, we want you to stay. I said, and do what? And they said, well, we want you to stand because he might go into toxic shock and we need somebody to fill in. I said, okay, man. I said, I do this for a while, but you know, I can hustle better than this. In right, 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 right. On your own. <laughs> yeah. on. So uh, I kept on and then about five months later, Levi got sick, couldn't do the gig. That's the same gentleman. Levi Stubbs. Okay. okay. Levi With Stubbs. Was, Levi Stubbs. No, Levi Stubbs was the lead singer. He's somebody else. Time. He had sung, sang all the songs. All okay. 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 So um, we had a guy named. They had a guy named Theo Peoples in the group with him at that time. That came from the Temptations because the first four top to die was Lawrence uh, um, Payton. Okay. And when he passed. They got Theo Peoples from the Temps to take his place. Okay. That was the first. That was the first fifth top for real. Okay. There was a guy way back that took Obi's place when he went to the army. And but when this is the real guy that came in and became a four top, other than an original. Mm. So he was there. So when I came in, when they come and said that Levi couldn't do the show, I was standing around. So I went to the the manager. I said, Well, uh, if I put my tuck tuxedo on and go on the stage be the fourth man we all get paid will we get paid and i wasn't getting but 300 a day mm. but still with with expenses paid mm. he said he looked at me and said can you do it i said no nah, never man i ain't gonna keep standing around like this on the <laughs> i'm ready so, yeah so yeah and plus duke had already told me to start learning the background and the steps duke is the other uh, original so i was back there doing all this and watching him do this you know? <laughs> so when the time came when I got ready to put my tuck on to go on the stage, the valet guy said, come here, man. See, can you wear these pants? And they threw Levi's pants on me. I had to wear them low because I'm taller than Levi's, so I wouldn't flood. Right. But he had long arms, so his coat fit me. I put it on. I had my own tuxedo shoes. And so I went on stage, and I got with him, and we did three nights. This is, where, this is where? In what city? This was in the Carolinas. I forget. It was okay. South Carolina somewhere. We were opening up for the Beach Boys. Oh, wow. And we did three nights, and we did it. And I remember Duke standing up in the dressing room and saying, the Four Tops would not miss another show. When they saw that I could come in and do that. And so at the time, that was 2000. At the end of 2000, December, we Levi, we did a show for President Clinton. His, oh, wow. His last supper, kind of like. It was, mm-hmm. it was the way that time out. And uh, that was the last time Levi did it. January 2001, I became a Four Top. 
and, I, and haven't looked back since then. So you've been doing this 20 years almost? 22. 22 years? Really? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we gotta, you gotta give me at least one crazy full stop story on the road. Craziest thing you've seen, craziest thing that happened, that somebody tried not to pay y'all, that tried to rough anybody up. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's hip hop. What's the craziest fourth? You gotta give me a four top road story. Any woman bang on your hotel door? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna say the name, but yeah. Of there course, was a, no there name. There was a story. It wasn't me, but it was one one of the guys that had a, little, had a problem with you know him and his lady. Got caught with another one in his room, and she, she talked the maid into opening the door. Like my husband, all that. Old. <laughs> Went in there, man, and hit my boy Obi with his, with a golf club. Mm. I said I wasn't gonna say who it was. But anyway, that's my man. I'll anyway, take care. I'll take it out. Yeah. So he, he <laughs> hit him in the head with a golf club, and uh, they called the security, and it caused all kind of all stuff. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. On the road. So usually, is the problem usually women? Not really. No, it's probably not never. Really. Uh, the real problem would be when the promoter don't come with the money right. That's what I. I knew it had to be one store. So you get your money going. See, the thing about performing is that. You get half the money before you go to make uh, sure you get there. You get there, right, right, right. You, you now get, the back end. You get the down from here. Now on the back end, they're supposed to sometimes pay before you go on stage. Sometimes you trust them to do it afterwards. Right. So a couple of times I saw where, you know, they, you know. Afterwards they, they want to act funny. Yeah. What's the excuse? What excuse can I possibly give you as to what you're not, you're not going to get paid even though you just did it? The house, the house might not be what they th thought it was going to be. You mean the take attendance. In? Yeah, the attendance, attendance. Might, not, might not have been. But you're supposed to know all of that before you do Put it. Put us up here. Yeah. But most of the time, you know, I, I've never seen where, you know, uh, where we weren't at least 60 to 75 percent full. Okay. And since COVID, man, we've been working so till this. We were 17 months off. And uh, then when we start coming back, man, we had shows, backup gig, gigs where we had to, like, we, we usually work in Florida. We do, like, maybe three in uh, January, then another three in March and April, like that. We did nine dates wow. in a row in Florida all together. And like this this October, we got 24 dates in one month overseas. I was going to ask you, where's that going to be? What's, what country? The first 10 are in uh, the UK, London and all that. But then the next is in Germany, Austria, uh, Switzerland, all of that. I was going to ask you, so that seems like that's astronomical. On average, how many times will you perform a month, roughly? What's uh, the average month? You know, it's, it's like it's like when sometimes when you have 10 days in a month, then there's another month you might not have with three. Right. You so might have four, so I can't say. Right, average. Average. Between yeah. four and 15. But we work at least 100 days a month, at least. 100 days a year? A year, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. But okay, I got you. All right. So before we go, let me ask you this then. Why is it, we've we seen the five heartbeats, which I think was fictional. We've seen the temptations. Why is it always it, with groups? Why do you think? It's such, um, there's always one to try to break away. Or somebody always get between the group. You know, Otis, don't nobody want you in the group. <laughs> Ain't nobody checking for you, Otis. Why, why is it all the friction with the groups, you think? Um, Historically. What I say about the ghetto boys, man playing tricks on you. Mm. False pride. Mm. You, some kind of way, you start thinking that you are, if you don't, if, if, if you don't get your way, then... You know, the group can't make you. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's plenty of people. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Brown felt like they was all singing to him, they say. Yeah, so, so you know, no, you, you know, when, you, when you, you're one person, if it's a five-man group, it takes all five. Just because you sing the lead don't mean that you're the most important person there. True. You know, that's... It boils down to ego. Okay. That's what it boils down that's to. That's it. I say false pride. Yes. You know. What is the, what is arguably why is the record business full of so many snakes? Like why why do so many artists end up broke and then they say the record label the contract was shady? Why why is the record business seem like it's the one business man that's full of the most snakes? I don't agree with that. It's full of the most snakes. You got snakes everywhere. Some in this water that they they, they, they jumped up <laughs> on it. true. But you know. But you you know you hear about the music I hear, industry. I hear it, but I um I don't think it's, it has to do. With just the music, it has to do with just people want to be slick, just business period. Just want to, just want to greed. Yeah, just want to have it all. And it's enough. And you, know, one thing I found out about the music business, it's enough money in the music <laughs> business to take care of everybody involved. Absolutely. See. Yeah. So we don't have to really be as greedy as they want to be. Yeah, even like sports. 
look at the contracts these sports cats get. They, they, that's, they, they, they're better than any entertainment business, I think. Mm. Because the kind of contracts them guys are getting, man. And, and since uh, I'm on that subject, there is one thing that I'd like to just put on the... What, is, what, is, what they call it when you put the ballot on it? What do you call it when you want something to be voted on? Uh, Referendum? V- veto. Uh, what, pass a bill? No, when you put it there for people to vote on. Um, put it on a referendum or something like that. Just yeah, I'm not political. I'd like to put this idea out there. Okay. All this talk about teachers not being able to get their money. When if you don't have a teacher, you lost, man. If, if you don't have teachers to teach our kids, what well, you know, what's what's wrong with you? Mm. And then so you don't want to pay a teacher. I think that if I was a sports guy making that kind of money, especially in sports, well, really anybody, man. There should be a little fund that's a teacher's fund from everybody that ever went to school and went and got a contract like that. What what, what would it hurt me if I'm making 27 million in a however they say to, to help to say, okay, uh, 0.5% of my money goes to help teachers mm. all across the country. So she ain't got to beg, he mm. or her don't have to beg to get their pay to teach our kids. The first wrong thing is, is why are you even charging your kids who are going to be the future caretakers of, of our country to, to learn. Mm. Why would you do that? So expensive, yeah. You know? Yeah. But in America, you had a right to be stupid. That's what I done found out. <laughs> For myself. <laughs> For real. You had a right to be stupid. <laughs> yeah. Just, okay. So you want to start? You want to start a petition? Maybe that's the word you're looking for. Maybe that Just is. Start signing you know, a petition. Yeah, if you and will. then I maybe I don't want to be hypocrite because you know if you think they say well if you think that why don't you do it? And since we're talking here, well you know I'm gonna approach somebody mm. that mm. I know in the sports field. Say man, what you think about that? Mm. You know because this that's something. You feel like that, the gap between the wealthy who do sports and the people who really at the at the ground level. They couldn't have got there they, without the teacher. The gap is too much. All yeah. I'm saying is yeah. you, I couldn't have got. Where I am without a teacher. I couldn't learn how to read Absolutely. and write so I can write my songs. I couldn't do it either. So really and truthfully, everybody, not just sports, let me take that back. Not just sports, everybody. Mm. Put a little fun, something that won't hurt nobody. For education. What is what is 0.5% of whatever I make? What is 0.5% of a dollar? You don't remember money. You know, you don't right. A nickel. A nickel? Yeah. What is that going to hurt me out of a dollar? None. I give homeless. They come up to me, sometimes my wife says, my wife, other people. Oh, you know, you they, you a sucker for them. But she do the same thing. She'll take care of them. I said, I don't care if they try to play on me. I gave it to them, hoping to help them. I'm through with it then. If right. They, if they run if off, they run off do drugs. That's on you. But you're richer it good, than me. Good and fine. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, before we go, man, I gotta ask you the final show of the question. As always, I mean, this is of course the Instincts podcast, so we always relate something to um, guys, other creatures, which are animals. What is the animal that you relate to the most and why? I got two. Well, okay. Horse. Yeah, you can give me both of them. Well, I, I, I don't know why, but my, well, I know why, but I'm a December baby, December okay. 14th, so I'm a Sagittarius. And they got half man, half horse. That's, okay. That's what I'm saying. But that's, that's not it. My, my mother, when I was a child, my mother taught me how to draw. She could draw. Some. She taught me the first thing she taught me to draw was a horse. Really? Yeah, and I, and I draw the horse. But the horse is a swift animal. It's fast. Yes, it is. And you know, powerful. And, and powerful. And a horse can, you know, a horse can t- 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 take care of itself yeah. from from kicking you, biting you, and being able to run, get away from you. Absolutely. You know. So what can I say? The horse. Now you said you had two. Maybe well, you want to give me a shot at another one. Well, the other one was about the picture that my mom. Drew, oh, okay. So. Okay, guys. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't have another animal. Gotcha. But the horse would be the one. I guess if it was another animal, a wolf would be the next one. <laughs> and why so? Why the wolf? Because, you know, you fear him. Absolutely. You fear a wolf. I don't care what kind he is. If you know a wolf is around, you know, you know get he out of the way. He head the way. All right, all right. Well, man, something tells me you're a man to be feared, but only if they mess with you. That's all. You got the biggest heart in the I, world. That's man. right, man. I, I don't, I, I get mad when I, uh, you know what? I'm going to tell this little story. One time, one of my best, best friends passed on me. Hurt me so bad, man, back in the 80s. And after it was all over, I was in the, I was about a few weeks later, I was trimming my bush hedges inside of the house. And I clipped, and I, and I know I hit something because I saw it jump on the corner of my eye. And I said, oh, I hope it didn't kill nothing. You know, and I looked around, I said, I ain't seen it. 
So as I looked around, I saw a butterfly. I didn't know what it was. Hmm. I, I looked at the side, and, the, and it was one of them cans that you could put in a jar and go get some money. Oh, wow. But it was like this. had his wings straight up, mm -hmm. and I didn't see it until I went to the side. I mean, one of them big ones, big man. One. Yeah. So I, I said, man, you, I didn't, did I cut you? <laughs> I'm about to talk to you. <laughs> so I grabbed it up. And the two wings at the top, and I said, "Go on, man," and threw him up in the sky. But he flipped, he flipped right back down on the branch next to me. But he wasn't hurt. But he flipped right down. So for my own self, my boy's name was Clutch. We used to call him Clutch. Mm. And I looked at the butterfly and I said, "Clutch, that ain't you, is it?" <laughs> come, you know what? You know what? Here with me. You know it was. That's what? what they, that's what they say about butterflies. I knew that. You didn't know that? No. They I just say. said that for my own. No, to laugh, I'm so I wouldn't you, cry. The, the 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 word on the street. No, I'm just kidding. They say that when you lose a loved one, a butterfly will often revisit you. Let me tell you, man, it was the biggest one. And then when I let it go, I said, I could have got paid. <laughs> <laughs> Look, think about it. You tried to get rid of it, and it came back. Yeah, no, and I, he did, I did. I threw. I didn't want him to be hurt, so yeah. I threw it up in the air, and he fluttered right back down. And that's what I said for my own laugh for myself. Yeah, clutch. <laughs> That ain't you, is it? Man, you ain't a butterfly, is it? Yeah, man. Because you're getting ready to get ate up if you <laughs> <laughs> Or get, I'm about to get paid because of you. Yeah. Well, that's the word, man. That, that is the word. And I've had I've lost enough loved ones, unfortunately, to uh, know that people have told me that that's what they've experienced as a butterfly after losing a loved one. And hey, me, what can they... F let me tell you this, too. And uh, all y'all out there listening to this, it's a pleasure for me to be here and watch this guy do this because... I've been knowing him since he's a baby. Yes, absolutely. And for him to turn into what he's turned into, I'm so proud of him. I don't, I don't know what to do. I mean, my man. I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm I appreciate it. I'm your still going to call you your a mom, legend. Your mom, and, okay, <laughs> your mom and daddy, I got to be the most proudest parents on him. Hey, I couldn't See be where I am man. without both of them, man. Yeah. I am a direct reflection of what they taught me. Yeah, my And man. I appreciate it, man. Okay. Ryan and McNair, where can they find you, man? You on social media or they got to go to the internet and just find you on tour? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not, you know what, I'm not really a social media person too much. Of course. They've been trying to get me to do that a lot. And, and I, you know, like Facebook. I, 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 you know what I call Facebook? What? Snitch Row. <laughs> but, you know, each to his own, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. But all that letting people know where you are. Hey, it's too man. many people. It's, you know, like you post say, everything. Uh, I'm, I'm gone. I'm over here. I'm gone here. So somebody can come ride my house know where I'm nah, gone. Exactly. I'm not that is just smart. I ain't getting it. Ain't getting out of that. But you can. I got some new music out. And if you go on YouTube. Here we uh, go. If you go, you go. I got a new video I've made for it. Pretty, it's called Understanding. And it's like I'm trying to do a, uh, give, you know, give a message, man, to us how we do. Okay. And if you go there and listen to that words, the lyrics I got in that song, it might help you. I understand. You go your way, you know what I'm saying? So you go to Blue River Records, that's where it's on. You can download it, and it's called Understanding, and you can go on YouTube and see the video. Nice. And any, all my other, I got a lot of other stuff that's, you know, Ronnie McNair, and uh, that's on YouTube. You can go check it out, download it. And uh, matter of fact, a guy asked me about Tina Marie. You didn't ask me about that. Okay. I got that. But uh, when I went to, I went to, uh, I was with a company called uh, Prodigal Records. Motown bought the company. Uh, I got out to LA, started seeing who was there, and I met a little girl that was singing in a room one day. And I said, uh, I asked one of the secretaries, I said, who is that? They said, a little white girl. And it didn't sound like no white girl. I said, you lying. <laughs> and, and I went around the corner, and there she was with a band around her head, with a guitar, and she was playing. I walked in the room, and I said, hey, my, son, my I'm Ronnie McNeil. I said, what's your name? She said, Tina Marie. I said, you know what? I said, do you have a, a project here? She said, no. I said, well, I'd like to do something with you. And she said, well, they just used me to show, present songs to Diana Ross and Thelma Hughes. Or they just put her on the demos mm. to show them the songs. Mm -hmm. So I said, nah, baby, I want to do something on you. So I went to uh, Mr. Gordy, Barry Gordy, and I said, look here, man, you got a white girl sound black, man. Let me do something, man. <laughs> and so he said, you, he, he said, Yo, Ryan, Ryan, you know what you write, man. So I went and I did eight tunes on it. But during the, after the eight songs, they came and said, we think you're taking her in the wrong direction. And they said, we want her to be a rock artist. I looked at him and said, you know what? I could see politics right then. Mm. See, mm. What, what happened That's was, no, I'm going to show you what happened. I brought out what they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they saw it, they said, oh, no. You got to keep it for We're ourselves. not going to let, let this, this uh, East Coast... Uh, whatever they might call me, come right. here. Come get, and get her. <laughs> yeah. 
this boy from the ghetto come here and to do this. So mm. they took her away from me as, a, as me producing her. But you can go online and there was a, there's, we did eight songs. They called it Rare T. You can download them. They were still demos, kind of. Songs was, that Tina Marie did. Tina, Tina Marie, Marie did that you produced. Yeah, she wrote she wrote five of the songs that's on there out of the eight. I did a duet with her on one of them and covered another song. And then, and you could that was that was her first. What you need, why you should do that, because it's her first time doing it on her own. I wow. remember I was in the studio one day and the guy said, man, she's peaking the, the, the levels. I said, that's okay, man. Let her let, her let it out, man. She's right. happy to be doing her own thing. Her own thing. Way before Rick James. Way before Rick James. Rick, Rick came two years later, saw the same way. Mm. Heard her up, in, up in Joe Bet. Yeah, mm. up in Motown. Mm. But he was in a position to do something. You know? Love it, man. Love it. So This Ryan right there, man. Y'all go check him out. You heard, his, heard him on YouTube. Google the four tops, man. Let's make sure we make sure this group is legendary. We give them their flowers while they all here. I appreciate it, man. My man. I love you, bro. All right. right thanks on. a lot.